Sa veľmi obyčajným dlhým svetovým grupádom Padman, je to teda prvý stolmečný pán. Sú teda všetci šelovom a nego som hrať. Jedno sú celé to svetovým šikšenom, sa nie je guru, je to teda prvý stolmečný pán, sú teda všetci šrimán, bakti, vedanta. Šla na rango som hrať, sú teda to svetovým šrimom, sú teda všetci šrimom, sú teda všetci šrimom, sú teda všetci šrimom, sú teda všetci šrimom, sú Astotara Shada Shashimad Bhakti Vedanta Shla Swami Maharaj So all the sannyasis sannyasis present here So all the mothers Those eager to listen to Harikatha So the feet of everyone Please accept my Dhanavad Pranams accordingly Today is a very beautiful and pure day Because today is Gopashtami Especially today in the Gaudiya Matas, we can see the lotus feet of Shimati Radhika. You haven't yet put the Shimati Radhika in the clothes of men. Gopa, after Harikata, Shimati Radhika will give darshan. Especially in the day of Gopashtami. Shmatratka dresses as Subal since the time of Gurudev. Always this festival goes in, on in our temple. Maybe the Pajari today didn't have time yet. Or so Shmatratka dressed as Subal once in a year. You can have the darshan of Shmatratka's lotus feet. This is very special. This is very special. Gurudev described this very nicely, this katha. When Krishna was small, there are two kinds of Gopashtami described. One is when Krishna was very small, young. He started to graze calves. So this is also connected to the Brahma Vimohana Lila, you have heard. Another point is when Krishna was older, grew older, after one year, Krishna started grazing cows. So the Shastra describes about two kinds of Gopashtami. 
In cows and calves are very important because all the pastimes that Krishna of Krishna that took place, they all all the pastimes took place while Krishna was like grazing cows or something like that. For example, when Krishna was small, Krishna said that and the Baba said, "You're so small. How will you be able to graze cows?" So even though Krishna is so small, he explains, look, we are Gopjati, we are cowherd people. So we have to, I have to follow also the rules of our family. For example, those who are Brahmana, from Brahmanic family, they follow that those rules. If those who are born in Kshatriya, they also follow the rules of Kshatriya and like this. So Krishna told, we are like, is to take care of cows. Do. To protect the cows. <clears throat> These are dharma. In the Gita, Bhagavan says, Krishna says, we should always follow our own dharma, like your own duties. This is the duty of a human being. If you don't follow your own duty and you follow the duty of someone else, then this is just explains how we have to follow Varnashram Dharma. We should follow Varnashram Dharma. If Vish Vishnu Bhagavan becomes pleased if we follow our own Dharma, the our duties according to Varnashram Dharma. In this way Bhagavan becomes pleased. Purushena means the conditioned souls, the duties of the conditioned souls, their duty is to follow Varnashram Dharma. We should always follow our own duties. Also, in the commentary, is also saying that we should follow the rules according to Varna and Ashram, means according to our nature. According to our nature, we belong to any Varna or Ashram. According to the nature of the person, according to the nature, the person will belong to a Varna or, ash or Ashram. For example, if you're, if you're born in the Brahmin family, but you don't have the nature of truthfulness, cleanliness, like all the ne nine or ten qualities described for the Brahmanas, sorry, twelve, twelve qualities. If you don't have these twelve qualities of the Brahmana, twelve, so you're not a Brahmana, even though you were born in the family of a Brahmana. So that's why in the Gita Bhagavan, in the beginning he said, according to the nature, right? Chatur Varna Maya Sritam Guna Karma Vibhagasa. According to the nature of the person, the person will be long to each Varna or Asra. According to the nature and activities. If the person is born in a Shudra family but has the nature of being a Brahmana, that person is a Brahmana, is understood to be a Brahmana. Vyasadeva wrote a book called Shatakam Jabali Upanishad. Satakam Jabali Upanishad. I'll tell you briefly the story, okay? Jabali was a woman. The name of her baby was Satakam, her kid. When her kid grew up a bit, he said, Mom, I want to study the Vedas. Then Satakam, he went to the ashram of Haldirim Gautam and told, I want to study the Vedas. At that time, only Brahmanas boys could study the Vedas, only Brahmana boys. Shasta explains, actually. Except Brahmanas, no one has the eligibility to study the Vedas. The Vedas are not ordinary. Except a Brahmana. So Hadrim Gautam asked, What is it, uh, your identification? He asked Satakam. 
Satakam gave the answer. I don't know who is my father. I don't know who is my father. I just know the name of my mom is Jabali. Then at that time, Hodrim Gautam said, okay, go to your mom and ask her. Then at that moment, Satakam asked his mom, what's the name of my father? What is the name of our dynasty? And then his mom, she cried, embraced her son and said, my son, look, when I was young, I have associated with many men. I have served many men. And because of this, I got you. I don't know exactly who is your father. So the boy, she said this, and the boy came back to Hodrim Gautam in that assembly full of Brahmana boys. He told in front of everyone, Gurudev, my mom told me this. That she doesn't know who is my father. She served many men and finally she obtained me. She, so saying this, all the Brahmana boys, all of them, became angry. He, this boy is impure. He cannot study the Vedas. But how did him go Tam? What decision he gave? How did him go Tam said, this boy is a Brahmana boy. Look, this is written in the Upanishads. Arjavam Brahmane Sakshat. Those who speak the truth, they are Brahmanas. So who is a Brahmana? That person who is simple. Saralata he Brahmanata. Simplicity is Brahmanism. Brahmanism is Vaishnavism. So first you need to become a Brahmana, simple. After becoming a Brahmana, then you can become a Vaishnava. It's not so easy to become a Vaishnava. We are saying, oh, Vaishnava, Vaishnava. But who is actual Vaishnava? Who? What are the symptoms? The, the more simple you are, without the and hypocrisy, you are a Vaishnava. Saralatahi Vaishnavata. Those who are simple, they are Vaishnavas. That's why Hodrim Gautam, he gave this decision. Satakam is a Brahmana boy. Hodrim Gautam. He is qualified to study the Vedas and Upanishads. So, in the Gita, Bhagavan said, Chatur Varna Maya Shritam Guna Karma Vibhagasha. There are four varnas and four ashrams. Brahmachari Giriyasta Vanaprasta Sanyasi. Four varnas and ashrams. So everything will depend on the nature of the person. That's why, according to the nature. Bhagavan Krishna also gave this teaching to the living entities of this world. Even though Bhagavan is beyond the ashrams, Bhagavan doesn't fit any special ashram. There's a Shudra or Brahmana. Like Bhagavan is, belongs to each ashram. Bhagavan is beyond all the ashrams. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave teachings to the jivas of this world. Actually, Mahaprabhu drank the food bathing water of a Brahmana one day. So also showing the rules of an ashram. Krishna also taught how we should. You know the story of Sudama Vipra. Krishna also bathed the feet of Sudama and drank that water, teaching how the Brahmanas are so high. Krishna has a special affection for cows and Brahmanas. Anyway, so the Kata is that so you belong to Varnas and Ashrams according to your nature so in this way Krishna said I was born in a Vaishya fa family 
There are four kinds of vaishyas. Not only one kind. One takes care of cows. Second, some business, some like shop and like this. Third one, third one is also uh, t like crops, like planting foods, you know, like agriculture, farming. And another uh, lends money, taking interest. So there's also another kind of vaisha, usurario. Usurario. So Krishna, he is Krishna came in the Vaishya dynasty. So Krishna says, I am Vaishya, so my nature is to follow this. What? Take care of cows. So, but Krishna, oh, sorry, Jashoda and Baba wouldn't tolerate separation from Krishna. Majashoda would faint. There is even a beautiful song in Bengali that saying this. How to send Krishna to the forest? Small boy, imagine. And also, the forest is full of thorns and the cows will run here and there. How can you go after them? Krishna says, Mom, but I will go, I will go. There is a kirtan about this. Very beautiful kirtan. It's a very beautiful kirtan. Especially our Kanai Prabhu in the time of Gurudev. He was a disciple of Shila Bhakti Pragyana Keshava Maharaj. His name was Kanai Prabhu. He used to describe his Goshta Lila in these past times. Now I was remembering today. Gopashtami, the day of Gopashtami, he used to beautifully sing this Goshta Lila, these past times in the songs. And then Mom just showed that she would faint. But still, Krishna was so stubborn. Krishna says, I want to go, I want to go. So there are many kinds of stubbornness from the kids, from the king, and Sri Heart is the women's stubbornness. So kids are also stubborn, like I, I have to go, I will go. Okay, so go for a bit only. Like before, when Krishna started grazing the cows, was close by only cows. So Krishna was ornamenting the beautiful cowherd dress. Like that song explains. Chote chote gaiya, chote chote ga. Chata samero madana gopa. Like Krishna is running behind the cops. And then, after Krishna grew up, he started grazing cows. So Nanda Jashoda said, how can you cow grazing barefoot? You should wear shoes. Then Krishna said, cows are our mother. She's our worshipful deity. The cow, the cow is going barefoot. barefoot. How can I also go wearing shoes? So Krishna is showing. All the cows and cows should be given also shoes. But it's not possible. One cow needs how many shoes? Four shoes. And the cows also together, so eight. And Nanda Maharaj has 900,000 cows. 900,000. So you cannot even calculate how many the cows also they had, these cows. So imagine how many shoes. And then, okay, somebody said, okay, Krishna, 
like Mother showed that so he should also wear like an umbrella because of the sun. Krishna said, look, the cow is my washbowl deity. How can I have an umbrella and cows no? So, okay, let's give an umbrella to all the cows. But it's also not possible. And the cows go here and there. How can you run behind the cows with, like holding an umbrella? So we need to run after them. So without shoes and without umbrella, Krishna was grazing the cows. I don't want to take much time. Today is a very beautiful day. So there are so many Leelas connected to the Gocharan Leela, Kaoguri's Leela. Shukadeva Goswami Pada explains, for example, in the last verse of Venu Gita, why does Krishna go for cow grazing? Banam banantari. Because Krishna is. Why does he go from one forest to another forest? Actually, he doesn't really want to graze the cows. Because Mother just showed that they have so many servants. They have thousand servants. Thousands of servants Nanda just should have in their house. Why would Krishna need to go? A rich person has so many servants. Okay, if one person is very special or rich, the person has so many people walking around him, like so many people. They don't have even duty, just like for status, to show you how many people. So many servants the person has. So Nanda Maharaj also has so many servants in his house. So why does Krishna go for cow grazing? What is the reason? One reason is two reasons our Acharya is described. To follow Varnashram Dharma. Because we need to follow properly Varnashram Dharma. Like I told in the beginning. We should follow properly our Varna and Ashram duties. Because on the basis of Varnashram Dharma is that we can slowly, slowly enter spiritual life. Bhagavan says, according to your own eligibility, if you follow your life according to your own eligibility, then this is very good. According to your own eligibility. If you do something which you're not eligible for, it's the reason for your fall down. Like this verse also explains. If you're not qualified and start to meditate in your swarup of your soul, you'll fall down also. Everything you should do according to your eligibility, adhikar. Even chanting holy names, you must be qualified to chant holy names. You must be qualified to chant holy names. When I'll, this day will come, I'll give up the offenses and I'll have taste to chant holy names. So we're talking about Adhikar eligibility. When Tananda Prabhu will mercifully give me the eligibility to chant the holy names. Pure holy names. So that they were describing. Namabas, Namaparad, and also there is Shodanam. Three holy names. Namabas, Namaparad, Shodanam. So who is qualified to chant pure holy names? Shudanam. Those who are Trinada Pisunichana, Tarodi Basahishnama. That person is qualified to chant holy names. That person who has the four qualities. Trinada P, more humble than the blade of grass, tolerant like a tree. Give all respect to others and doesn't hecker for his own name, fame, and reputation. Then the person is qualified. So we want to chant holy names before we have the qualities? No, no. Chant, 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 and slowly, slowly, your Namapara will be over. 
first to chant namabhas and then slowly slowly shuddhanam will come this is the conception of the scriptures so you must follow according to eligibility who is qualified to enter as lila we are here who is qualified to enter the ras lila you must give up your bodily conception and realize your transcendental form and after that can serve shumateradik then you qualify for the ras not everyone is qualified for us Lakshmi Devi, she couldn't give up her own abhimana, her ego, pride. She couldn't give it up. Dress as a gopi, be born as a gopi. No. But Krishna has one rule, there's a verse. You should always remember one verse of Chaitanya Charita. Krishna kahe am gopjati. Krishna says, I am a Gopa. I don't accept anyone else except a Gopi. It's a very special verse in the Chaitanya Charitam. You need to get the body of a Gopi. Be born in the body in the house of a Gopi. Krishna says, I'm a Gop. And I don't accept anyone else except a Gopi. You need to get the body of a gopi. Get married to a gopi. And then, meet me in Parakya Ras, Krishna says. You need to accept the guidance of the Nitesa the gopis. Like in this talk of the pulling the girls, it's beautifully described about this. Anyway, you should accept the guidance of the Nitya Sinagopi. Then you can enter the Raslila. Why did Lakshmi, why she couldn't enter the Raslila? She didn't want to be in the, under the guidance of Gopi. She didn't want to be born in the body of a Gopi, house of a Gopi. She wanted to meet Krishna in the body of Lakshmi. She wanted in the body of a Brahmani. Lakshmi entered the Raslila, but it's not possible. So, we must have qualification, eligibility. If we don't have this eligibility, if you cannot attain being unqualified. So, what is the speciality of doing bhajan? have to accept and have this qualification and to get this qualification after getting qualification we can slowly slowly enter the realm of bhakti Raramana Sambhad also explains how everything starts in Varnashram Dharma and going to the topmost Braja Prem, Radha Prem so today is Gopashtami I was saying it's a very beautiful pure and sacred day so we're thinking about this and slowly, slowly, when the time will come, we'll give up the body. So imagine slowly, slowly, our gross body and subtle body will die. You can say, I mean, you give up the gross and subtle body. And then your internally conce conceived body, all of you have the body of your soul. You have it. Bhaktivinoda Thakur in the Jaiva Dharma explains. You have the body of a gopi. If you are in the Madhurya Ras, Ras, you have it in the form of a seed. You have it. Mahir and Harikata, slowly, slowly. You get the favorable environments and your seed will sprout and grow. That's why Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarvashastra Koi. 
Even a moment association of the sadhu can yield all perfection. The glories of sadhu sangha. You already have it with you. May here in Harikata, your heart will be purified, and whatever you have inside will manifest. So you should hear Harikata. By hearing, hearing slowly, slowly what, whatever you have inside will manifest. Then you'll be able to see your sarup. No need to worry. No need to worry. Just serve and do bhajan. Just under the guidance of Guru Vaishnavas, you should just serve. That's it. Vaishnava Seva and Namasan Kirtan. Mahaprabhu told, just serve the Vaishnavas and chant holy names. If you do these two things very quickly, you attain the feet of Shigovinda. No need to do anything. There's no need to do anything. Just chant holy names and serve the Vaishnavas. Sorry, last thing. I didn't. I was to speak and then I'll finish. Okay, so Krishna went for cow grazing. Then Brahma and demigods saw the footprints of Krishna's feet and started doing puja, started worshipping the footprints. Jiva Goswami describes very beautifully all this. When Krishna used to go for cow grazing, Now the footprints of Krishna would be on the sand like this. The demigods, demigods, they used to worship these footprints, like Brahma and Shiva. In the Jugala Gita, all this is described. So the Bra uh, demigods, Brahma, Shiva, they used to do worship of these footprints, worshiping, offering puja. Sakas, friends of Krishna, would see like who are these people. They used to become afraid. And they used to come back in, in like broken language, telling Mama Jashoda and Nanda Baba, we saw some strange people with long beard, this has different hair, doing stuti to Krishna's footprints. Mama Jashoda, she was so absorbed in Vatsalya Bhav that she thought, oh, maybe it's like some ghost, some, some, some bad entity, some subtle bad energy that wants to do harm to Krishna, wants to harm Krishna. So that's why Mama Jashoda said, Subal and Madhumanga and all the other sakas. You should you should be always around Krishna, around my boy. So that no any bad like entity or ghost or anything like that might attack Krishna. How Brahma and great demigods they were hankering for this food dust of Shri Krishna and they were praying to his feet. The same Krishna couldn't go for cow grazing. No, sorry. No, no, wait, wait. So why Krishna was going for cow grazing? He was going for cow grazing. Why? To meet the gopis from one forest to another forest. There's no any other reason. Pralada, Dhruva is searching for God. And God is searching for the gopis. This is the speciality of Krishna go for cow grazing. Bhagavatam explains. So by the Lila of cow grazing, our Charis described that Krishna, he's searching for whom? For the gopis. To meet with them. Bunch of